In this video, I'll show you how to use the automatic positioning system on the Spike Prime or 51515 motors. The motors for the Spike Prime system are quite different from the previous ones. They have this little circle on the motor and a little gray dot on the spinning wheel. And this shows you the zero position on the motors. So these motors do not measure in negative degrees. A spin to the right and the motor counts up from 0 to 359. And then at 360 that reset at 0. And if you spin to the left, it counts from 359 back down to 0. So there are no negative readings on these motors. Because these are LEGO motors, they're pretty accurate, but they are not exact. Just like the previous EV3 motors, there's a little wiggle in them. If you look at the reading for the motor, Right now it is set at zero, but if I wiggle it, it'll drop down to about 356 and up to one or two, three. So there's always five or six degrees of play in the motors at rest. What these motors can do is be asked to go to exact degree settings. And this can come in pretty handy for controlling mechanisms on your robot for tasks like lifting, grabbing, or steering. I'm going to use this test bench and this program to show you how to take advantage of these motors. So under the when program starts event, I am going to set the motor speed to 30% so that the motor will always run at 30% and you'll be able to see it. I'm also going to go to the lights and just turn on the happy face so that I will see and know that the program is running. Now under these other two uh, events under left button is pressed I'm gonna place this go shortest path to position zero command and I will be able to use this to reset my motor back to zero anytime I want and then so when the right button is pressed I'm gonna use the same go shortest path to position command only now I can choose what angle I want it to go to either by using this slider or by just typing in the degrees I want it to go to in the button here so I'm going to say I want it to go to 75 degrees. So now let's watch what happens when I run the program. So now that the program is running, I'm going to press the right button. And you can see the wheel ran to 81 degrees. If I use the little play thing in it, it drops down to about 77. And now I'm going to reset it to zero. And you can see it dropped down to 359, which is basically zero. Now let's say I want to run it in the other direction. Well, I don't go minus 75 degrees because that's not there anymore. So I actually realize that this is also 360. And then I can do 360 minus 75. And that would actually get me to 285 degrees. And you can see that this is on the exact opposite end. So now when I run the program and I press the right button, the wheel runs to 286. And then again, I can reset it to zero. And I'm at 358. But again, with the little play there, it's right at zero. So finally, let's say I want it to go to 285. But rather than going the short way, I want it to go the long way around. Well, to do this, I have this pull down menu that I can take advantage of right here. And so rather than going shortest path, I can set the motor to run clockwise or counterclockwise depending on the direction I want it to run. And in this case, I'm going to need it to run clockwise to go the long way around to 285. And then just to show you, I can return it in the opposite direction. I can run it counterclockwise back to zero. So now when we run this program, you will see the motor runs the long way around and it stops right on 285. And then we can return it to zero. And it stopped right on zero. So I'm already having fun finding ways to take advantage of the automatic positioning in some of the programs I've been creating. And now that you understand how it works, you can take advantage of it too.